Hi. I um I came outside um as you know for anyone who knows me knows how much I love nature and God knows I have a lot of it around me which I love. Um what a beautiful day in New England, huh? Gosh, it's gorgeous out. I love to have shorts on again. It's awesome. So anyway, I came out on my porch and I was thinking as I often do. Uh, and I was compelled to come on and um, talk about the word regret. I think everyone's experienced it on some level at one point or another in their life. And some people, maybe more than others, maybe more profoundly, whatever the case may be. We all have our own experiences with regards to emotions and how we feel them, experience them, and act on them but in any case um even those that say they have no regrets there's always regrets they just might not be earth shattering you know it could be a regret that well you know in retrospect if i had done that then maybe this would have been easier but in the end i don't really regret it because i learned a lesson and i did what i needed to do Ultimately, the hope is that everyone can feel that way in the end about any regrets that you may or may not have. Because at the end of the day, everything can be perceived as a lesson if you're willing to learn from it. Because we only really have the here and now. You know, I often say like, <clears throat> in what I do for a living, I often say when we focus too much on the past, oftentimes we, we deal with some level of depression, right? Because oftentimes if we're focusing on the past, it's because there's something about the past that we're having a hard time moving forward from. And then if we're focused so much on the future, that screams control, right? And whenever you deal with control or avoidance on any level, and avoidance is a form of control, then we're talking about anxiety, right? So mindfulness says be in the here and now do one thing in the moment, especially if you have a lot of things on your plate, you break it down and you do one thing at a time because you can focus better on it and you'll probably get through it faster. And that's one more thing you can check off your list, right? Anyway, oh, sorry if you hear all the birds. There's a, um, a nest right up there, it's super cool. I love the birds, but anyway. Um, in any case, a lot of people are going to feel probably a lot of the past come up for them in, in, in the future weeks. Uh, it's typical with any kind of a retrograde. And I know that's not for everyone to hear because not everyone believes in <clears throat> astrology or all that other stuff. Um, but certainly not the Sunday, the Sunday Times astrology. That's trash. But fun for kids anyway. But um, I believe that everything has a little bit of truth to it, especially if it's been around for thousands of years. Things don't last that long unless there's a little bit of truth in it. You could say that about astrology. You could say that about the Bible. You could say that about faith of any kind or so many things. You know, I'm not opening those cans of worms right now. I'm just saying, if it's not for you, don't listen. If it resonates for you, well, then, you know, maybe it's for you. Simple as that. Anyway, um, regardless, you'll still probably feel a little nostalgia in the weeks to come. And oftentimes when we're feeling nostalgic, we think of things that maybe we could have or should have done differently. Be very careful of that trap. Because whenever we use the word should or shouldn't, it's shaming. And oftentimes keeps us in a self-imposed prison. Oftentimes of the past. Well, the past, like anything else, evolves into the present, right? And all you can work with is what you got. You can't. The past is valuable because we can learn from it, right? We can learn that, okay, if I have regrets regards to that, with regards to that, <clears throat> what does that say about what I want or what I'm striving for or what fulfills me? 
What, it, what does it say about me as a person and what makes me happy or what I think would make me happy, right? Life is about learning. I remember in uh, 2019, fall of 2019, before COVID and everything, I went to a, a parent-teacher conference at my son's school. He was in third grade at the time. And on the wall was this really cool uh, poster that said, mistakes are proof that you are trying. Well, isn't that the God's honest truth? Don't be afraid of mistakes because of the fear of regret. Well, regret is usually something we can maybe change in the here and now. Who knows? It's hard when it's with regards to other people, right? Because then we oftentimes will think, well, what if they don't want me to apologize or they don't want me in their life or they don't ever want anything to do with me again? Please run with it because it could pertain to any kind of regret. Who knows? I'm just going with the relationship thing because that can tap more into emotions. But they're all assumptions. They're not based in truth. So when you find yourself really strapping in with a negative assumption that, oh, no, I've done this, that, I shouldn't have done this, shaming, right? They're not going to want anything to do with me because I'm a terrible blah, 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 blah. You can go down this whole rabbit hole. Um, if, if you know it's an assumption and not based in fact because you haven't actually talked to somebody and you don't know for a fact that that's how they'll react... Uh, then you have to be willing to look at positive assumptions too. The opposite, right? Because if you're willing to make up a fantasy, then you might as well go on both ends and see which one resonates better. I don't know. And then that usually says something about you. Because if, if it's all negative, well, then maybe you have negative belief systems about yourself. Or maybe about the other person or maybe about the situation altogether but again it's a way to gain insight and not necessarily based in fact especially if you haven't tried right now this goes both ways though right oftentimes you see people post memes and stuff about how oh don't judge me if you haven't walked in my shoes da 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 which is all very true it's the golden rule right do unto others <sighs> however we also have to be willing to extend that to other people. You can't sit there and wish everyone would understand your point of view and then refuse to understand other people's point of view. I mean, you can generalize that as much as you want, whether it's to wider events or whatever, or whether it's just to uh, an individual interpersonal relationship or conflict whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in a familial of some sort, or whether it's in a meeting a stranger and wondering, why were they rude to me? If that really rocks your world, then that might say something about your own insecurities. And we all have them. I don't care how secure someone might present. Everybody has them. <clears throat> you know, some are just more willing to look at them from a strategic point of view and try and work on them versus just accepting them as reality, accepting those assumptions that, yeah, I am a crappy person or whatever the case may be, which isn't true. We're all God's children, whether you believe in God or not. We came from someplace. You say, oh, we're all the amoebas children. <laughs> whatever you believe, I don't know. I accept everybody. I have my own belief systems in my own truth but I don't force them on anyone I just and I don't expect people to believe like me and that's okay for me again I've said this in the past if it's not okay for you well then maybe that's some healing you have to do within yourself or at the very least questions as to why is that not okay for me whatever in my house it's going to come without judgment well at least for me I'm going to try because I haven't always been non-judgy. You know, it's called progress. I always say, I hope when the day comes that I die and close my eyes for the last time, which it will come, I hope I'm a far better person than I am today. So I plan to continue on this path of hopeful 
growth and self-development and hopefully that makes me more tolerable to other people but in all honesty it's more about being tolerable with myself I think the other things are just a natural consequence a positive natural consequence that comes from trying to be your best you right most people want to be around people who make them feel good but you got to be honest and authentic I'm not one to blow sunshine up someone's ass just for the sake of it. And anyone who knows me knows that's true. <laughs> it's one of my favorite lines from Top Gun, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I digress. Anyway, with regards to regrets, we all have them. Some, it, it hits home harder than others, and it's okay okay we we have them learn from them how do you want to move forward but don't get so stuck in the future of how things may or may not go that you just keep yourself stuck in life life is about movement it's about flow it's about growing it's about evolving and and loving and and not just in yeah just in general i i you know, loving nature. This, I made a post one time. I wrote it all up on <clears throat> my thoughts on love. Because there's so many forms of it. But it all comes down to the same, the same origins, I guess. It's kindness. It's respect. It's co compassion, fairness, integrity. Uh, it's all those things. And with that, the it may present differently. Sometimes it presents with firm boundaries. You know, I love you. I would rather make you feel better, but however, I have to set this boundary because if, if you don't learn to navigate this boundary, you're not going to evolve, at least not within this dynamic or whatever the case may be. Again, I'm sticking with interpersonal relationships because those are the ones that tend to trigger us the most. Most people aren't triggered by a tree. I'm sure there's someone. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But anyway. So as you're hoping to be understood in life, it's important to return that favor to other people. As you're trying to reconcile how you feel and what you're learning about yourself or regrets that you may have, sit with them long enough to learn from them and then forgive yourself forgive others it's it comes down to radical acceptance right acceptance does not equal approval you don't have to approve that somebody wronged you or that you wronged somebody but in order to move beyond it you have to accept that it happened and allow the integration i guess so that you can absorb that not to judge yourself or or belittle yourself or to keep yourself stuck but so that you can move forward with that extra piece of knowledge you know that extra piece of okay so when this same situation or energy presents itself I'll recognize it because I've experienced it and because I actually learned from it I know now how I want to respond to it differently. I think give yourself a feather in your cap, man. <laughs> regardless of how some people feel so wise and better than others and whatever, and other people feel like they're so belittled and so lesser than, at the end of the day, we're all human. And we're all maybe at different levels of experience maybe at different levels of learning but we all have the same emotions the same situations that arise for us for us at different points in time for the most part i mean yes there are some situations some of us are lucky enough to never have to experience but I can bet you that if you're experiencing it, at least one other person in the universe or the, the world has also. We're not as isolated and as alone as sometimes we think, but we are unique in that we all have our own individual personalities, 
And as we go through life and that meshes with our environment, we evolve differently. We develop different belief systems. We develop um, just different different ways of interacting or whatever the case may be. And that's good, right? I'd be so bored in a world if everyone was me. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> I'd probably hate them all. I'm just kidding. I don't hate myself, but if, if everyone was me, I'd, there'd be enough. <laughs> Makes me chuckle just to think about it. Anyway. I don't know. Embrace your uniqueness and your similarities. Our, I should say, because I'm part of this human experiment too, I guess. It can be fun. I used to always say, I think it was my uncle. God love him. I think he used to say, my uncle Jerry used to say, life is too serious to be, or no, life is too important to be taken seriously. And I really, that just like t hit my soul, right? And I was like, you know what? That's so true. You can't get stuck in overthinking every situation that you wish you had done different. Because what you're going to find yourself doing if you get stuck in it is repeating it. And then getting yourself further stuck by judging yourself even further. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. I keep doing this. <laughs> Cut it loose. I'm not saying don't apologize if you owe someone an apology. Or don't reach out if, if you left someone hanging. Or don't... Um, you know, but the thing is, is sometimes we don't have that option. You know, if if the regrets that we have is around someone who passed away, we we feel like we never got closure. Or if someone just dropped off our planet mysteriously and left us with no answers as to why. It happens. That doesn't mean you have to hold grudges or hate people or think less of them because we don't know. It's kind of like when, when I'm in traffic and... Oh, I used to have really bad road rage. I did. Probably because I'm always running late. But anyway, working on that too. Um, if someone cuts me off or drives like belligerently, I always stop and think, well, what if, what if they're on their way to the hospital or they, they're just not in their right head? Yeah, I'm not saying that's always the case because obviously, you know, we can all be jabronis when, you know, at times. God knows I know I can um, but I remember one time when I was 18 and my dad was in the hospital and I was so scared and I was cutting people off left and right. I was trying to get to UMass. I had never been to the hospital. So I ended up going to Worcester State Hospital, <laughs> which was still an institution at the time, I think. And I remember the police officer saying, can I help you? And I says, yeah, my dad's in the hospital. He's having heart, heart problems or whatever. And the cop actually, he tried not to chuckle, but he was like, I think you're in the wrong place. But I was right next door. But anyway, my point with that is that um, I drove like a jerk. I, I could have caused accidents, but thankfully I didn't. Knock on wood. Um... But I'm always reminded of that when other people drive like that. It's like, I don't know. I'm not in their head. I don't know why someone acts the way they do. Or I do know that I don't have to react to it. In life, at this point in my life anyway, I wasn't always like this. I was far more reactionary in my youth. But at this point in my life, I try to respond, not react. I try to take in the whole picture recognize how much of my emotional response is due to my own internal struggle and how much is actually due to what's happening in my environment. And then I am, um, I try to respond appropriately in a, in a decent way, right? And sometimes I don't get it right. That's everyone but I don't hang myself up in regret. If I owe someone an apology, I look them in the eye and I apologize. I own my crap.
And anyone who knows me knows that's the God's honest truth. That doesn't mean I don't make mistakes, but again, mistakes are proof you're trying, right? I guess in the end, give yourself permission to be who you are. Give yourself permission to meet wor the world from where you're at and just try, do your best. And at the end of the day, it may not be what you want, but if you at least gave it a go and you tried, you can hang your hat on that. Get a feather in my book. It's like little kids, they get stars when they, you know, give their best effort. And that's all we can do. We can only move forward with what we have in the hopes that we will gain more. Align with your path. Figure out what makes you happy. What do you want to strive for? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? And see where life takes you. But you do have more control than you think. You do. But you have to take the time to pay attention. Not overthink. Believe me, I'm an Aquarius. I overthink everything. Air signs do. But again, I'm not going to go down that road. My point is, is just be mindful. Paying attention, approaching things in a focused way. And that's hard to do if you're struggling with anxiety or if you have ADHD or things like that. It can be hard, but not impossible. That's why we have grounding. And one thing that's, nothing's more grounding than being out in nature. I watched, uh, <clears throat> is someone I like to watch uh, her YouTube. And she said, and it just really resonated with me. She said, it's hard to be angry sitting underneath a tree. Well, if you don't like trees, I guess that's not gonna pertain to you. But I love trees. And it was so true. I remember when I was in my undergrad, I'd, I'd sit outside under trees sometimes and just type my papers. I was quiet, I was in nature, I was grounded. And I didn't have to think about my four jobs that I had to get to or whatever the case may be. You do what you gotta do in life and you move forward. That's my uh, my take on it anyway. But it's 22 minutes, so I'm gonna let you go. Get back to my birds and my trees. I hope this is helpful. Um, I think it's important to learn to forgive yourself. To recognize that it's okay to be who you are and to be where you're at. But don't make it harder on yourself by keeping yourself stuck in the past or stuck in, in self-judgment. <clears throat> Nobody deserves that. Take the time and heal and learn from it and help it to motivate you moving forward, okay? All right. Apparently someone needed, you know, I'm sure someone needed to hear this message because it was really in my heart to say it. So in any case, enjoy this beautiful day. If you're in central Massachusetts and are be able to experience it, I'm sure it's beautiful in other places in the world too. So hopefully wherever you are, it's gorgeous. But even rain, rain is needed too. So I don't know. Try and find the best in everything. Mindset really, really helps. Okay? All right. Have a great day.